Um, I think they eventually got something and they went back to plan and it was great. But th th this is one of the reasons why you don't want to have to do this in the last week before the project because then you probably won't have any data or if it takes too long to actually get it. Um, so, um, so now that you have your data, you should be starting to kind of work on how you're processing it. And it varies a lot from um, that has a very lot to do with um, but so I, I think let's see the the deadline for the intermediate report is actually the Monday after spring break. Um, so, um, so I'll talk more about that um, um, next week. Um, the, the, the sorts of things you should um, have done at that point. So it doesn't need to be everything done, but you should have the basic structure done. So just um, keep working on it, and you'll probably be fine at that. Uh, would we be covering the like, most of the three steps that we need for simulating the data by that point? Um, so, uh, um, so the <laughs> the reason I asked you to think about that is because um, if you want, you know, if you want to try and generate some synthetic data which maybe has more or less noise or is larger, then it's good to think about doing that. But you know, in, in general, this is a really hard question and. And there aren't always um, the, 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 there aren't always good ways of doing it, and so there's often no actual right way. So I'll talk about some of doing that for graphs when we're in the last section of the class. But that'll be you know um, I think your final report is actually due at that point. Um, so um, so that, that, so so I'm I'm hoping. So, so it's a really good question. So I'm hoping throughout the class you'll start to try and understand what sort of, of structure of models and data um, um, you can find. And these models should try and guide you of, of um, like, so how you would simulate the data would then be to try and generate something um, that's according to this model and then maybe you add some noise on top of that, right? And it is, so you kind of want to think, what model do you want to find? And then you could say, let's actually put that model in the data so it fits perfectly and then add noise. And if you can control the noise, you can kind of understand more um, closely um, how well your algorithm works with respect to the analysis does. Um, so it's, so it's, so it's, so if you have some concept of what you think it's going to look like, then it'll be better for the, um, you know, for how you analyze this, it. just kind of one of these things where you should be kind of going back and forth between what is the model you think the data should look like and what are you actually finding, and uh, always keep these different views in your mind at once. Um, so let's see, the the homework is not uh, um, done being graded yet. Um, I guess there's there's maybe a chance it'll be done by Wednesday, but probably. It won't be done until later in the week, so I'll probably hand them back to class in one week. Um, so I, I, I mentioned last time there's another clustering assignment posted. Hopefully this one requires less um, kind of figuring out how to piece everything together. It's more um, different pieces, you know, separate. They aren't built on each other. And then I also <coughs> posted a version of uh, a smaller homework assignment that's not due until after spring break. Um, it's it's not um, it's not finalized yet, and the data sets might end up changing or something. So, um, so you can look at it, but don't um, kind of what, what, at the point when it's finalized, I'll make an announcement. Um, but just don't kind of download it and assume that that's going to be the, um, the absolute final version. Um, but that one should be, is only going to be 10 points as opposed to the, the other ones were 20 points. So that one should be shorter, even though it's over, it's over the spring break mainly. It should, shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, okay, so, um, so, so what we're going to talk, um, start talking about today are um, frequent, um, Um, frequent items, and in particular, the stuff today is going to be about 
finding frequent items and streams of data. And then um, the one on Wednesday, uh, we'll, we'll talk about um, find things which is not quite streaming, but you make still multiple passes over the data. And it's going to be for frequent kind of sets of items. So here, we're going to be talking about just the silver problem of you have, you have a bunch of a huge set of things, and some things occur more than once, and you want to find the things that occur a lot. Um, right, so, so um, and so the, um, so the, um, um, so how this problem is set up is you're going to have some set of, um, you're going to have some set of items, say A1 through A2 through AM, and each, each of these items is going to be in some domain and um, so, so you, you're going to have this can be from some set which is 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 um, uh, 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 some set which is large and so we're going to have um, both M and N are going to be um, very um, large um, so think of this as being the space of all um, of like all um, of like all um, um, of like all IP addresses, um, um, so these could be all IP addresses, or maybe all words in the dictionary, or maybe these are all like tuples, um, or say shingles. Um, where we have some really large set here. And we're also going to say M is very large, so it's a really um, a large number of items. So maybe these are these are shingles, these are shingles of um, of everything on Wikipedia, right? Or if it's IP addresses, it's all of the traffic um, that a router sees in a day. Um, so it's routing tons and tons of these, these IP addresses through. Um, and so we're going to be looking at this problem in a more constrained model, um, and this is called the streaming model. And so the the the, the uh, uh, um, techniques we'll develop for the streaming model will be very useful for other sorts of algorithms that we'll actually talk about uh, later on in the class. Um, that they aren't necessarily to be done in the streaming model, um, but it's a uh, it's, it's an interesting um, constraint on how you think about algorithms um, um, by itself. So um, the streaming model, um, um, it's, it's, so the main point of it is that it requires um, very small uh, space. So we're going to think of this on the order of um, 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 some polynomial, like a small polynomial of log m plus log n. So it's not you can have linear space in the number of items um, or in the space of possible items. So you're going to have some place in your memory for every possible um, a, a, um, for every possible IP address. And you're not going to have, and a router can't store every packet which is sent through it. It's routing it. It gets it, it sends it someplace. But it wants to know something about this data that it has. Um, and so, so it, we're going to work with very small space. And so why? So, so, so it's going to be some polynomial, although the algorithms I'll talk about today is just going to be uh, linear in log M and and um, log n. And so why are we going to use log m and log n? Um, can we get any smaller than this? Why is this the right kind of um, kind of um, the right kind of balance to be looking at? Um, well, so if you look at just one of these, um, if you're just keeping track of how many of these different values you've seen in the, in the router, the router is just trying to count how many items it's seen um, all day, right? So how much space does a counter take? If you're just trying to count something, if you're just trying to 
keep track of, like, depends on how high you go, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you have, so if, um, let's say you have uh, um, some bound M, that you're not going to see more than M um, of the items, right? So M is going to be something like a billion, right? And I'm not going to need see more than a billion items. I want to keep track of how many items I've seen. Yeah, so, um, so a counter um, is going to have um, log M space. So, um, so just to store the um, this this number m, if you're just if you're just thinking of the bits, right? Then you need um, log of this many bits in order to store. So if, um, this was going to have log n space just for a counter, and then this log n is needed because if we're indexing um, somewhere into this array, right? So we have a label. So if we have a label of which element we've seen. We need to at least index into this array. And to index into it, we also need log n bits now. Um, so this count counter took log m space. A um, label is going to be log n space. Right? So basically, the only thing we're going to be working with are basically these labels of things we've seen and these counters of how many things we've seen. So maybe it's how many things we've seen total, or maybe how many of a certain number of a certain one of these labels we've seen. So then, so we're keeping track of the things that are frequently occurring. So in, in our goal, uh, I mean, I'll define the problem in, a, in, in just a minute. But the goal is going to be to find the objects in the space n here that are, that, that are occurring very frequently. So think of. Um, you're sitting on a router and there's some sort of denial of service attack towards one IP address. Um, you want to be able to, de um, to detect that there's a lot of traffic, much more than you would expect, being sent to this one IP address. Right? So just keeping track of that by, while sitting on a router requires you know, something like this much space. This label to know which IP address it is, and this counter to know how many things you've seen targeted toward that IP address. So you, you said A belongs to, you have a set, so I thought, okay, if you have a set and you keep adding the same IP to the set, it will be there once because it's a set. And then if you still yeah, have so counters. Yeah, this is a multi-set. Yeah. Okay. And if you have counters, then you have multiple counters with the same count, those would again, if it's a set. Yeah, so we'll see how to do this. Okay. Um, so that's what, so we'll spend the whole class just talking about this one, one problem. Um, but so the, the, the so, so I still need to find a little bit more about this streaming model. So if we only have this much space, that means we don't even have space to store um, to store the input, right? Um, so we have a small amount of space. So how does this even work if we can't store the input, right? Usually, maybe you say, well, it's sitting on the hard drive. We can go and and access it on the hard drive if we. Um, if, um, if we really need to. But we're going to be even more restricted than that. We're going to say that we've got A is going to be the stream of items coming in. And so, so this is AI, AI minus 1, AI minus 2, AI plus 1, right? And so these items are coming in, and these are the ones you um, you've seen all these items and you haven't seen these yet. And what happened is you've got some CPU that's um, sitting here, and this can process things, and it's got some block of memory. And so what you do is you're reading these things once in the stream of items coming in, and you only get to see them once. You can read them and then you can store something in the memory. But this memory is a very small space. It's much smaller than, than the stream. So you've seen these items, and once you've seen them, you can't go back and see them again. Uh, once you've seen them, they're gone. They're coming through like a router. You're seeing them, you decide what to do, you send it all someplace, and maybe you update something in your, your memory. Um, and then, you know, there are more things that are keeping coming in all the time. Right? Um, so this is the streaming model. And so, you know, it's 
it seems like the real emphasis on here is that you only see things once a year. But, but really what it's doing is it's forcing you to design certain things that require you have a very small amount of space that you store things in. And so this isn't just useful for things like where you're sitting on a router, where, the, where this is the router and this is the data flowing through it. But it's also useful when this, is, this stream is your hard drive. And when you're reading things from the hard drive, um, then doing random access on your hard drive is actually really slow. So if you can design an algorithm where you only need to scan something once in the order that your data is stored, you bring down a whole block, you scan it, um, and then you don't need to look at it again, then this is going to be a very efficient algorithm if you have very large data. So even if this is your hard drive and you're just scanning something, this will be much faster than randomly accessing um, this, um, um, randomly accessing this memory. Um, and so there are some variations of this where you're allowed to make um, two passes over the data instead of one pass. So you can see it and store something, and then you can be able to go back and see it one more time. Or maybe you can make some small number of passes. And for very large data um, things you want to do on a single CPU, then these are tend to be very efficient algorithms for working with. Um, so on a very large scale, sometimes you measure how fast your algorithm is versus the time just to read it, right? And if it's only kind of a factor 1.5, you know, increase over the time to read the, um, all the data, then, then, then that's reasonable, even if, you know, this, this takes an hour just to read the data. So if it takes an hour and a half to do your algorithm, then that's, that's pretty good. Um, so, so it's kind of a, a very useful way of thinking about these problems. And as you'll see, there's some very kind of, I'll, I'll talk today just about two kind of very cute tricks of how to solve a frequent items problem in this streaming model. So, so, so now that I've described it, who's, who's seen uh, this streaming model before? Okay, and so, so a few people have seen it, but most of you haven't. So, um, so okay, so how people have seen it, who's heard of the uh, Misha Grease algorithm? Who's heard of the, uh, 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 um, the Countman sketch? Okay, so, so those are the two algorithms we're going to be coming up, we're, we're going to be discussing today. Um, so these are pretty cool. Um, okay, so now um, uh, um, some notation. So let's see, so we have this, this stream, and we're going to say that f of j is, is going to be, is if you look at the set of all items in the stream such that a of i is equal to j. And then this is going to be the count. So it's the number of items in the stream that have value j. And this is for some j in this set. Right, so this is the, the count at, at item j. And so, the frequent ones are the ones that have a large value f of j. Um, so this is the frequency of i of j. Um, and so then, um, a couple of, of, of common things is that people will write f1 is, is going to be um, the sum over all j in <coughs> of f of j. Um, and then also, there's also the F2. Um, which is F of J squared, square root of this. Um, so then you can also do the, um, the F0, which is J equals. And, and this is 1 um, if f of j not equal to 0. So it's, it's 1 if this item has occurred and 0 otherwise. So this one is just, it's always going to be equal to m. Right? This is always the number of elements in the set. Um, this one is the number of distinct elements. And this one has to do with, well, sometimes it's squared, sometimes it's Sometimes you take the squares, sometimes you don't. 
but it has to do with if you're doing some like join, some like database join, then this is an estimation of the size of the join. So you sometimes want to estimate this, this value. And so these are kind of um, the frequency moments and are very kind of classic problems in, um, in streaming literature is to try and estimate these values. This number of distinct elements, the number of elements total. In fact, this number of elements total, you think the bound should be uh, um, log m. Um, because this is just a counter up to size m, right? Well, you can actually do it in less, less than log m space if you're allowed to have some error. Um, so there's this, uh, some really cool tricks here where you can even compress the space smaller than log m um, in, in order to store this. Um, and that's kind of the number of bits. It's kind of a, there's, there's some really cool techniques in this area. Um, okay, so now the the, um, um, so now we're going to say that a phi um, heavy hitter is is f is if um, is j if f j is is greater than phi times m. Right, so if more than a phi fraction of the elements are j, then you say fj is a phi heavy hitter. And so the, the frequent items problem is to find all of the phi heavy hitters for some value phi. So that's, that's, that's the heavy hitters problem. It turns out that finding them all exactly is going to take too much space. We can't do this exactly. So we're going to approximate this. Um, so we're going to say the epsilon approximate phi um, heavy um, hitter is um, so is j if um, if fj is is greater uh, greater than phi m, this is good, um, um, is not um, fj less than phi m minus epsilon. So you have this epsilon slack, so you don't want anything smaller than phi m minus epsilon to be reported. And, um, and, and so then, if, if you have um, phi m minus epsilon less than fj less than phi m, um, then you don't care. Right, so, so you want everything that's really one of the phi heavy hitters, um, and you don't want to accidentally report something that's too small, that's less than epsilon less than. So, so think like phi might be 10% and epsilon might be 1%, right? What else values are positive? Um, so all the counts, right? So this measures the size of a set, so it must be non-negative, right? So you're saying that fj is greater, greater than phi of m and less than phi of m minus epsilon? Um, no, it's not less than this. So it's, it's not less than phi m minus epsilon. Oh. Right, so I'm allowing some slack, right? So it, anything, so anything that's greater than phi m, I, um, then I must report this, right? If it's less than phi m minus epsilon, I, I can't report this. This would be um, like a bad false positive. I didn't see that. Yeah, and then if, it, if it's in this range between these two bounds, um, then I don't care, right? So you have um, phi m, you have phi m, minus epsilon here. And so if if you have if you have um, fj here, then you have to report it. If you have it here, then you can't report it. If it's here, then you say, well, I'm not sure. Um, so, so maybe I report it, maybe I don't. Right. So m is the total. Oh uh, yeah, so m so, yeah, so m is the number of elements that's equal to f1. Yeah. You're saying 10% of them approximately. 
Yeah, so if 10% if of my IP traffic is going towards one computer, then there's probably some, uh, um, some sort of now service attack. And if it's less than, you know, I say if it's less than 9%, then, you know, um, then maybe, um, then maybe I don't care. Sometimes things get these 9%. And if it's between 9 and 10, well, maybe I'll report it, I'm going to look into it. Um, so, so, so actually the algorithms we'll be talking about are going to have feed, um, we're going to have, so, oh, sorry, this should be epsilon m. Sorry. So, yeah, so epsilon will also be something between 0 and 1. So we're actually going to have phi is equal to epsilon. So if it's above 10%, I'm definitely going to report it. If it's less than 10%, um, well, then I might report it. Then I'll go and investigate. Um, so, I, and I'm going to get some guess of how big it is if it's less than less than the 10%. Um, but so this will be the, the the problem that will be attacking. They're trying to find all of the epsilon approximate B heavy hitters in this script. Okay. Sorry. So just to be clear, if J. So this problem, we're going to get to this in a second actually, we're going to take a step back and talk about a really simple problem in the streaming model and then we're going to use this to build up a solution here. So we're going to look at a problem called majority. Um, so, so, so this problem is, you're given a stream, and you might have something that occurs more than half the time. If, if it occurs more than half the time, um, then you have to report it. If nothing occurs more than half the time, then you, can, um, then you can do anything you want. You can report something and claim that it does, or you can say, you know, I don't think anything does. Okay, so, so, so it's, if you don't allow this otherwise condition, then this problem is really hard. But if you do allow this otherwise condition, where you can do something crazy if there isn't a majority, then you can actually solve this with a very small amount of space, a very simple algorithm. So in fact, we're going to use, um, it's going to be very simple, we're going to use one, one label and one um, counter. Right, so, so this is going to be log n plus log m space. Because I'm just going to use one label and one count. All right, so how is this algorithm work? I'm, I'm just using one label and one counter, so there's not so much I can actually do here. Right, there's not a lot of. Um, different ways I can actually run an algorithm with this limited amount of storage. So I'm, I'm counting, but so what if I get a, 
stream of seven, seven, two, three, seven, four, seven. Uh, let's say seven, eight. Okay, so the most recently seen. So I'm counting seven. And then what do I do? Then you still have seven and counters two. Seven counters two. Um, now what happens? And the label's two and the counters one. And now the label's two and the counters one. Okay. So at the end, what is the counter going to be? The label? Eight. Yeah, so I have five sevens here, but only nine items. So this, I should be able to return seven as being um, in the majority. Case you haven't, um, uh, there's one special case you haven't um, figured out yet. So let me write up a different sequence here. All right, so it's got the same numbers, right? So how's how is this algorithm work now? The label is two. Yeah. Count is one. Okay. Count is zero. The label is three. Ah, uh, so uh, so I changed my label here somehow. Okay, so good. Um, so, but if, um, but keep doing this. So, what happens here? Uh, again, you change the label. Seven, count is one, count is two, count is three, and count is two, count is three, count is four, count is three. Then it's seven. So, if it's different, great. So, it works. Yeah. So, um, so that's right. So. Uh, Um, so I'll write this up. So, so basically, you you keep um, that's great. So, so so you keep a counter for what you've seen so far, and if you see that again, you increment the counter. If you see something else, you um, you decrease the counter. If the counter ever gets to zero, then um, that element which caused you to decrease gets then gets the label, and you have the counter at one starting there. Okay. So let me write this up, and then I'll go ahead and explain to you why you know. Try and justify a bit more formally why this will that only result in the most common of one part of the element. It's it's uh yeah it's not right. so it's going to satisfy exactly this problem. In fact, I designed this problem so that my algorithm works. Okay. So <laughs> I made it as strong as I could so that that I can solve it. Okay. Um, okay so we're going to set c equals to zero and my this is my counter and my label equals an empty set. Okay? And then and then for i equals one to m. So this is my stream. Then um, if ai is equal to my label, then I do my counter plus plus. Else, my counter is minus plus. I, I'm going to decrease it. Um, now, if my counter equals to zero, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the counter equals to one and my label equals to ai. And then at the end, I'm going to return. Um, on yeah, So that's the whole algorithm right here. And so this algorithm is due to um, Misha and Tom um, Grease in 1982, but it's been rediscovered about five times. Um, it de depending on, um, there, there's, there's another algorithm which is a kind of a variant on this where, well, so, um, so actually this is, this is actually, uh, this is going to be the simple version of what we're going to solve, the epsilon approximate heavy theorist algorithm, and that algorithm is, is the one due to niche increase, and that one will be, have, have been rediscovered. Um, but I, I, I think they also solved this problem. Um, so it's, it's a very simple algorithm. And um, so, so let me now try and 
So first, is there any questions on the algorithm? How do you know that it reports the majority of anything else? So how do you know it's the majority? Is there just a random number? You don't. So I'm allowed to, if, there's, if, there, if there is a majority, I will report it. If, if, if uh, instead there's something, one thing occurs exactly half the time, I could report anything. Yes, so I, if seven occurs the first four times, I'm going to the next, and then I get one, two, three, four afterwards, I'm going to report four. So how, how are you going to do this? I mean, yeah, well, we'll that see next. Well, I'm going to extend this next to solve to solve a variation of this problem, and you'll, and you'll see how you use it. If something is really big, right? Let, let's say I really only care if something occurs 75% of the time, right? Then, then I know my counter will be at least um, at, at least um, at least 25% um, of the data if it occurs 75% of the time. So then I have some leeway. Okay. So um, why is this true? Um, so. Say so, so first assume if that if there is some FJ greater than M over two. Um, then we're going to have that the um, the counter is um, decremented at most. M over two times. And um, so, so, so they're going to be um, at least, or um, they're going to be more than M over M over two times try to add j, right? So if I say try to add, I mean either it's, it's something else is going to be the counter and, and we're going to decrement it, or the counter will be zero once we do this and we're going to um, say less than equal zero. And, and, we'll be, and we are going to add this, right? So more than m over two times, we're going to try and add it. So, um, so that means um, and because 